the first part of the conference cartism made by Mr. Shaw in 1830, a question book prepared and published by Rev. Barnabas Shaw, not long after his arrival at the Cape in 1816, is however probably the first Methodist publication in South Africa. But as William Shaw was the first Methodist missionary to preach to the people of Southeast Africa in the Kosa tongue. So he was the first missionary to give them a Christian publication. You better stop there because the name was of the publication. William, uh, sorry, was this William uh, first missionary? Missionary. Missionary. Yeah, was he? Banapas. Was he an English or? This was, missionary, ne? Uh, was he uh, English? It was English because it is Barnabas. Barnabas. Mm, Barnabas. Uh, okay, mm. carry on. Okay, well, uh, he can't carry on because there's going to be some words that he should not be saying. So let me continue reading from there. It might be better. Where did where, you stop at? Not uh, mm, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, in a Tosa language. So he was the first missionary to give them a Christian publication in their own tongue with a Methodist uh, printing press. Printing press is important. That's how they get this stuff going, you know, or, you know, you, you, you leave, you leave, you, and then that goes, that goes beyond your culture, you see. Here's the next paragraph. Here we go. A big step forward was the publication in 1834 of a first grammar of the Kaffir language by the gifted missionary, Reverend W.B. Boyce. Can you imagine that? They're singing the praises of the guy. A gifted missionary gave them the first publication in 1834. The first publication, the title was Grammar of the Kaffir Language. Imagine. Whoa! Imagine this notable work. Here we go. Still lauding the work. Where did he learn this course? Uh, uh, this you call him the missionary mm, this to come and preach in cross around it. Where did he learn the course? Because our history tells us they came out of a river and talked to Noah in cross. Where did they learn the course? Oh, there is something behind that. Oh, yeah, there is story. something behind that story. Now. Yeah. Okay. This notable work, which marked a new era in linguistic study in South Africa, was prepared by Mr. Boyce at his lovely mansion. I'm sorry. At his, I said mansion. That's that's a faux pas there. At his uh, at his lovely mission station, where, as Mr. Shaw states. He a quote. He was unmarried and unencumbered with distraction with distracting cares. Close quotes. As a result, a long and patient research, Mr. Boyce found the key to the structure of not only the Kaffir language, but the whole widespread family of Bantu languages. Think about that. He got the key right. Here we go. For years, the secret had eluded the missionaries. With the aid of a young pupil, afterward to be known as Mr. Theopolis Stepstone, Mr. Boyce collected a large number of words and sentences as spoken by the people. He classified the collection, reduced the whole to a certain degree of order, and then searched for the laws that govern the structure of the sentences. For long hours in the quiet of the evening, many of, uh, when many a task of the day had been laid down, Boyce wrestled with the problem, discussing it with young Stepstone, who, who being a missionary son, had grown up in the country and could speak Kefir like a native. They're saying Kefir, also the same thing. Mm. But this guy can speak, this, this guy was his assistant. But the scheme but of the they language call them into, uh, into different uh, the Kefa and uh, native. But they're saying that it's, it's the same. It's, the, they're, 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 it's like synonyms. They're the either. same Kefa and the native. Kefa, maybe, also, all the same. 
For the, that's that's what I'm reading here. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe I'm interpreting. No, I'm reading I'm between the lines. Was only two, which was just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, who could uh, 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 a young stepson who, being a missionary's son, had had grown up in the country and could speak Kefir like a native, but the scheme of the language was slow to reveal itself. Valuable aid also came from Joseph C. Warner, then beginning his useful work as a, uh, uh, what's a catalyst? Uh, what's a catechism? Catechism. Cate uh, I don't know what that is. Who had been in the country from boyhood, as someone had put it, boys plowed uh, with Warner's heifer. Wow. Mid cow, whatever heifer. And I know this uh, sort of according to you. Hmm. The word kefir, I know it being used by the Boers, mm -hmm. and they, they call us the Kafirs. Mm -hmm. Is there a meaning to do? How did they? How did it develop? How did that? I really don't know how this uh, Kafir but the name came from. How they called us Kafirs, mm -hmm. and even on the, in the forties, they still call us the Kafirs. Well, obviously, at least, at least this book was written in nineteen twenty-three. It's mm. called The Story of a Century. Um, it's about okay. uh, missionary mm. work, and it's, it's in 1923. Jeez. So they're it's talking about this in 2020. Uh, we were the first uh, uh, to, 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 how can I put it, we were the first whites to come into South Africa. Well, maybe I haven't, I haven't read, 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 read this guy's background. Sounds English, Stepstone, it all sounds like English names. Remember, but he, I don't know much about this history that you have know, in. It's a different history to the history which you school. got from school. school. Mm, mm, yeah, course. it's quite far from the history we oh, got okay. from the school. Okay. The history, the history that we were taught in school, oh, the history that we were taught in school, is is, is just a lie. So it means they. Exactly. It, it means exactly. they. It means this is a raw history, because that this book they were doing it for themselves to know. What was happening? Yeah, not, so, for, not they for us. never knew that the Kefas, the Kefas will ever know no, these. about this mm -hmm. until this guy came around and wrote about the true facts of the of the, uh, the, of the whites. Of the whites. Yeah, that they want to call us Kefas and natives. If they call you a native, they must know that it's a black person. Black person. Mm -hmm. So it's the way that they label us as the, the uh, black people. Yeah, as black persons. Because if they say, oh, they that kafir, person, then that kafir is okay. Yeah, they know, you okay, know fine, it's, it's a black, black person. person. Mm -hmm. well, That's what I think, uh, actually. It is, like that. That. it is like that. Well, to answer your question, Brother uh, Ati, obviously, uh -huh. the two, the, these two missionary sons, two people, they, they were in the country before. And they still couldn't really speak the, or uh, write the language down. Exactly. But this guy gave them the key to write the language down, which gave them, which now, which now they can spread that around to their other mission. This was, book was not written for for the general public. It was written for missionaries. You know, it wasn't written for for the natives, so so to speak. You know, it wasn't written for the autochthonous people. Uh -huh. It was written for other missionaries to understand the language, and they can continue exploitation. And that's what I, I want to know. Where did he learn? The Kefir language. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 the missionary son grew up, and so the missionary son learned it by speaking. But the writing of it, that's what this guy did. And by writing it down, then they could spread it to other to other missionaries, other people by writing it down. So he got it from two missionary sons and other, other white people that were there, but didn't have the time or the patience to write down. Remember this guy, they said this guy, he had no wife, he had no distractions, so he could spend his nights trying to, with this, with trying to unlock this, to this, this secret. Uh, mm. When that's the two missionary sons, you know, I guess they had other things to do. They just helped them and that's how it happened. Mm. Wow. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, but there's, there is a different, different, different story between the, his, I mean, mm. uh, between the history of that, of this book of this book and the history, and the history of, of our schools. Hmm. There is a difference, well, that, a vast, vast difference in the track. Well, it just sounds to me, and that's just my opinion, that the, the book, the book itself, uh, it's, it's an honest book. So it really is history from a, from a, like a memoir like that. The stuff you get in textbooks in school, that's what we call propaganda. Mm, that's why we can't argue about this because we only got to, who get to know these things when you go to school among the history, getting the history. Mm. 
Well, I and got being taught about uh, how the whites came around here and what they did and what they did. Nothing was said about the Kefirs <laughs> except that they Before were they attacking. They were attacking the whites. Interestingly enough, you know where I got this book from? For the price of 60 rand, I got it. Uh, I was in Grahamstown, you know, the home of, of, of uh, Rhodes University. Uh, uh. And I got it not from the library. I not got it from a bookstore. I got it from a street vendor. A guy selling books to the street. Imagine. There you go. Knowledge is all around. When it's got something so important. Yeah. Knowledge is all around. Universe. University. Hey.